Next, we'll move on to amyloidosis. So, amyloidosis is uh, actually there is going to be deposition of a material called as amyloid. So, that is going to cause some uh, tissue damage and organ dysfunction. So, what is this amyloid? It is nothing but a fibrillary portent which is going to have an amorphous morphology and it is characteristically extracellular. It is never intracellular, okay? So, there is an ex extracellular amorphous pinkish material which is a fibrillary protein basically. And this is uh, actually because of the aggregation of misfolded proteins. So, this amyloid can be of various types and these are basically misfolded proteins which tend to get accumulating, uh, which tend to get, uh, get accumulated and cause organ dysfunction. So, what is the structure of this amyloid protein? It is a fibrillary protein in the first place. So, under electron microscopy, if you see, it is going to be a continuous, every word is important, continuous, non-branching, fibrils of diameter 7.5 to 10 nanometer but of indefinite length okay so continuous in the sense they are going to be continuous of indefinite length but their diameter is going to be of 7.5 to 10 nanometer length and they are characteristically non-branching this we see on electron microscopy but if you see it on extra uh, crystallography and infrared spectroscopy you are going to see beta pleated sheets. So, beta pleated sheet configuration is the one which is responsible for the characteristic appearance of this amyloid protein on Congo red staining which is by refringence. Okay. So, if you see under polar microscopy, so polar microscopy after Congo red staining, if you see it will give a uh, apple green by refringence which is because of the beta pleated configuration of this amyloid. So, every word here is important. So, in uh, HND stain, if you see, you are just going to see this pinkish extracellular amorphous material only, okay. So, all of this is going to be amyloid, which doesn't have any structure basically. But if you put a uh, Congo red stain, so the special stain for proving it is an amyloid is a Congo red stain. So, under Congo red stain, normally on light microscopy, it will appear pink only. But if you put, uh, if you see, visualize it under the polar microscopy, so polarized lights, uh, if you see, it is going to give a apple green by refringence. And on electron microscopy, we have already seen they are going to be non-branching fibrils of 7.5 to 10 nanometer. So, all these image based questions can be asked as MCQs. So, if you see the types of amyloid, we are basically classifying it into systemic and uh, 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 familial and also localized. Okay. So, under systemic or generalized amyloidosis, we again have two subtypes which is primary and secondary amyloidosis. So, primary amyloidosis is the most common type and here it is going to be the AL. AL stands for amyloid light chain. So, the amyloid here will be called as AL which stands for light chain. So, there is excess light chain which is going to be misfolded seen in multiple myeloma and so, you are seeing this multiple myeloma. So, this light chain, amyloid light chain is going to get deposited in various organs, especially the kidney. And here, because of this only, you are going to have the characteristic finding which is Benz Joan protein. So, we will be seeing about this in detail when we say when we said about multiple myeloma. So, just remember, primary amyloidosis is the most common type of amyloidosis wherein you see amyloid light chain, AL kind of amyloid deposition. So, in secondary amyloidosis, you can uh, usually see it with various chronic inflammation. So, any chronic inflammatory disease can uh, re uh, result in secondary amyloidosis. So, usually we see it in tuberculosis, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel diseases, uh, then there are bronchiectasis also. So, you can never see amyloid associated with a chronic bronchitis. It is only in bronchiectasis you see amyloidosis. Apart from that, some other cancers like RCCs and Hodgkin's lymphoma are also associated with secondary amyloidosis. So, what is the amyloid which is deposited in secondary amyloidosis? It is going to be AA amyloid. So, AA stands for serum amyloid associated. So, this protein serum amyloid associated is going to be produced by the liver. So, it is actually an acute, acute phase protein, acute phase reactant produced by the liver in response to chronic inflammation. Okay. So, during chronic inflammation, we have interleukin 6 which is going to be elevated. So, this interleukin 6 is the one which is responsible for production of acute phase proteins by the liver. 
So one of the acute phase reactants is serum amyloid as, uh, uh, associated protein which is SAA. So this SAA is going to form this amyloid associated AA amyloid ok. So in chronic renal failure there is a special type of amyloid called as A beta 2 microglobulin. So we represent it as A B 2 microglobulin. So this is uh, post dialysis this A beta 2 microglobulin is going to accumulate especially in the hand wrists. So, in the joints it will accumulate especially in the hand wrists. So, moving on to the next type of uh, amyloidosis which is hem familial or hereditary amyloidosis. So, under this we have two examples mainly familial Mediterranean uh, fever. Here it is an autosomal recessive disease in which there is going to be a mutation in a gene called as pyrin. So, pyrin uh, stands for fever ok. So, that is why these patients are going to have fever. So, this pyrin uh, gene is going to be mutated resulting in excess of interleukin 1 production. So, this excess interleukin 1 production will again result in lots of inflammatory cytokines being produced which will again form the serum amyloid um, associated SAA amyloid which is AA type the same as the one which we saw in secondary amyloidosis. So, this uh, SAA is going to be produced in this patients which is result in the fever and various inflammatory reaction. The second type is going to be the familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy. Here it is an autosomal dominant disease here and the amyloid deposited here is the ATTR which stands for mutant transthyretin. So, mutated transthyretin is going to be deposited in these patients of familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy. So, where does this get, uh, getting deposited? It usually deposits in the various peripheral and the autonomic nerves causing dysfunction of this nervous system. And when you are reading about this ATTR, there is something called as systemic senile amyloidosis. So, systemic senile amyloidosis as the name suggests there is going to be systemic deposition of this amyloid in old elderly age group. Usually it is of the transthyretin only but here it is unmutated transthyretin ok. So, mutated uh, transthyretin is seen in familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy while unmutated transthyretin is going to be seen in systemic senile uh, amyloidosis. And usually this uh, systemic senile amyloidosis is going to be deposited in the heart. So, next we will see about the third type of amyloidosis which was localized amyloidosis. So, specific organs this amyloidosis is going to cause dysfunction. So, first example will be the Alzheimer's disease. So, Alzheimer's disease we all know it is a dementia. So, there is going to be cortical dementia in these patients because of the deposition of an amyloid called as A beta. Here actually the amyloid protein which is deposited is the amyloid precursor protein. So, this amyloid precursor protein is present on chromosome 21. So, this no, amyloid precursor protein is normally going to be cleaved by the alpha gamma secretase that is normal. But when they are going to be cleaved by the beta gamma secretase activity it is abnormal and it will enter into the amyloidotic pathway. So, this beta gamma secretase will in turn result in the formation of A beta uh, proteins ok. So, this A beta proteins will tend to accumulate usually it is of A beta 42 subtype. So, this A beta 42 will get accumulated and it will form multiple polymers oligomers and polymers will form and this polymers tend to go and deposit on the uh, Meyernet nucleus of the uh, cortical neurons. So, a Meyernet nucleus is the one which produces acetylcholine. So, when Meyernet nucleus, nucleus is being accumulated with this amyloid, it is going to cause the dysfunction. So, decreased acetylcholine production will be there which will in turn result in the cortical dementia in these patients. So, Classically, if you see in these patients, there is going to be presence of this amyloidotic plaques. So, neuritic plaques we call it as, ok. So, this neuritic plaques are nothing but composed of this A beta 42 only which is the amyloid actually. And these patients, the Downs patients, Down syndrome patients are especially prone to develop Alzheimer's disease at an early age group under less than 40 years. Usually Alzheimer's develops in elderly age group but in Down syndrome, usually it develops in less than 40 years because here Down syndrome is because of the trisomy 21 and I already mentioned the amyloid responsible is amyloid precursor protein APP present on the chromosome 21 only. In Down syndrome there is going to be an extra chromosome 21 
So excess of um, amyloid precursor protein is going to be present. So that is why Down syndrome patients are going to have, develop Alzheimer's at an early age of less than 40. So in diabetes mellitus type 2 again you are going to have amyloid deposition. Here the deposition of amyloid is AI, amyloid islet uh, associated protein. Okay. So, islet associated protein AIAPP. So, I mean, islet associated polypeptide basically. That is the one which is getting deposited. And the car, uh, cancer in which we are going to see amyloid is medullary carcinoma of thyroid. Here, it is the ACAL which is composed of the calcitonin. Calcitonin levels will be elevated in medullary carcinoma of thyroid, right? So, this calcitonin will deposit as amyloid and is called as ACAL. And in atrial amyloid doses, it is the AANF which is the amyloid which is deposited and it is going to be composed of atrial natriuretic factor. So, we, these are the various types of amyloid doses. Let us see about the various organs in which this amyloid gets deposited. So, the most commonly involved organ will be the kidney. Okay, kidney is the one which is most commonly involved, but in elderly, if they ask specifically, it is going to be hard because it was systole, uh, uh, systemic senile amyloidosis, right? So, unmutated TTR is going to be affected. That time I mentioned, it is going to affect the heart most commonly. So, in heart, where is going, where is this amyloid going to be deposited? Usually in the subendocardial region, also in the myocardium. So, when this endocardium is going to be deposited with this uh, amyloid, it is going to cause dysfunction resulting in arrhythmias and restrictive cardiomyopathy. In fact, restrictive cardiomyopathy, the most common cause is actually amyloidosis. Okay. So, in the kidney, again, it is the most common organ being involved and in the kidney, it can uh, uh, be deposited in various uh, orga, uh, places, mainly around the Artery, arteries, okay. So, around the capillaries, arteries, mesangium, around the tubules also. So, peritubular location. So, all these locations the amyloid can be deposited and when it deposits, it is going to occlude the mainly around the vessels it is going to uh, deposit, right? And it will cause the capillary lumen to get occluded and this will result in a nephrotic kind of a presentation. In the liver, it is going to de uh, deposit in the space of disease. So, space of disease is the one which is present between the hepatocytes and the liver sinusoids. So, between the hepato uh, hepatocytes and the sinusoids, we have a space called as uh, space of disease in which we get this amyloid deposition. It will result in the cirrhosis. In the spleen, you can have deposition of amyloid both in the white pulp and the red pulp. So, the white pulp is the one which is the splenic uh, follicles which form the splenic follicles and here when they are going to deposit in the splenic follicles, it is going to appear like a sago. Sago is nothing but uh, what do you call it as Javarisi in Tamil. So, this sago spleen is there, no? So, it is going to appear like studded sago grains and it is why, that is why it is called as the sago spleen. So, sago spleen, white pulp. While splenic sinuses which form the red pulp, they tend to, the sinuses are present over uh, various places, right? So, when they tend to fuse, they are going to appear map-like or geographic areas and that is called as lardaceous spleen. So, lardaceous spleen is for red pulp and sago spleen is for white pulp of the spleen. Okay. So, how do you remember lard? So, here you have R and D, right? So, insert an E in between. So, it appears like red. So, red pulp is for lardaceous. So, in the joints, you can see amyloid deposition, especially in the knee and wrist joint, especially associated with dialysis patients. That is, Amyloid beta 2 microglobulin is the one which will be associated. So, dialysis patients will be uh, usually having this kind of uh, syndrome. In wrist joint, when they accumulate, they are going to cause carpal tunnel syndrome. So, carpal tunnel syndrome will be uh, resultant because of the median nerve compression. So, medium nerve is going to be compressed resulting in carpal tunnel syndrome in dialysis patient because A beta 2 microglobulin is going to be uh, deposited. So, in the skin again, you are going to have uh, amyloid deposition especially around the blood vessels making them quite fragile. So, the, uh, one, when, once you pinch the skin, it is going to produce uh, bleeding from the vessels. So, it is called as pinch purpura. Okay. In the tongue, the uh, deposition of the amyloid is going to cause macroglossia. The tongue is going to be quite uh, big and it is resulting in macroglossia. 
So how do you diagnose this amyloidosis? Grossly, if you receive a specimen, how do you diagnose there is amyloidosis? The organ will be very much increased in size. So organomegaly and they will have a characteristic waxy appearance. Okay. As if some candle wax has been put on it, they'll appear a waxy. And if you put Lugol's iodine on that, Lugol's iodine on this or, uh, gross specimen, it is going to give a mahogany brown appearance. So, mahogany brown appearance is seen in amyloidosis. And onto this, if you add sulfuric acid, it is going to turn blue in color. Okay. So, this is the classical description of a gross specimen of an amyloid, uh, amyloidosis. So, microscopically we have already seen amyloid is going to appear amorphous, pinkish, extracellular structure. So, what are the special stains to highlight that it is amyloid? So, anything which is pink, uh, can, you can, uh, it can either be co co collagen, amyloid or any other substance. So, how do you prove that it is amyloid? You will have to use certain special stains. So, the most common special stain for amyloid is the Congo red stain. So, under Congo red again, if you see in general, after concrete stain under light microscopy, it is going to give a pink color only. But if you see it under a polarized light, it is going to give the characteristic apple green by refringence, which was because of the property of beta pleated sheet seen in the amyloid, right? Other than that, we have uh, various other special stains also like methyl violet, crystal violet, thioflavin, S and T and then parietic acid stiff, so past 10 also. So, biopsy, uh, you will have to usually uh, for proving amyloidosis, they take biopsy from the abdominal pad of fat most commonly, more than the rectal mucosa. Initially, it used to be the Initially, it used to be the rect rectal mucosa. Now, it is the abdominal pad of fat which is being used commonly. Okay. Now, we had seen about amyloidosis. Amyloidosis has various MCQs. We will have to revise it at the last moment also.